linda família, namora que que diria magonjwa. Alright, thank you for keeping it Ebro TV. My name is Emmanuel Kutosi and we are about to jet in our discussion concerning matters health. Health is an investment that is very key for you to be part of and today we are joined by one from the National Health Insurance Fund who will be able to give us all of the benefits, all the good things that come out from you choosing to invest in your health. In studio today, we are joined by Mr. Wambogo Karioki, the head of the Department of Beneficiaries Management at the NHIF, moving into looking at matters on the journey towards attaining universal health coverage within the country. Bono Wambogo, welcome to Ebru TV. Thank you, Bono Yes. My name is Wambogo Karioki um, from NHIF. I'm the head beneficiary management. Beneficial management is the department that is concerned with the enrollment of members, and, uh, actually members and their dependents. We are also concerned with matters of uh, enforcing compliance of the NHF Act. And uh, it is also the department under which the universal health uh, coverage, implementation of the universal health coverage is being implemented, uh, which is a task that NHF has been assigned by the government. Yeah, so, and maybe just to correct you that NHF is National Health Insurance Fund, not National Hospital Insurance Fund. We underwent an amendment last year in January, and uh, the president assented to the new law on 10th of January, making, trans among the key areas that changed is changing NHF from National Hospital Insurance Fund to National Health Insurance Fund. So we remain NHF. But now H stands for health, not hospital. Mm -hmm. I stand corrected. And I also have details, maybe you can clarify that, that it's also going to change by the 1st of July. We're going to move into a new name, the National so Matters of Social Health Care. National Social Health Care. Yeah, again, with the new government, is that uh, there, there is a proposal already that, uh, again, we are going to be renamed to National, uh, National Social Health Insurance Scheme. I don't know that is something in, in progress. It's not something that has already been finalized on. And of course, definitely once that is finalized, uh, then uh, every Kenya will be informed. But right now, we are still operating as the National Health Insurance Fund. But when now that time comes, when the process now of transitioning to what the, now the, the current government has proposed, then Kenya will be made aware of that. And definitely now we have to align ourselves with that. But either way, you're getting the idea that you're moving into a way of ensuring health moves on our social uh, Play, play field. Rather, it's more of involving and not something that is isolated or targeted at a particular group, but something that wants to encompass all Kenyans within the whole journey, and particularly the universal health coverage journey. Now, I'd like to get your view from where you stand because you are at a place where you're dealing with the beneficiaries, and that is the impact point of UHC. How's the, how has the journey been so far? Um, okay, universal or UHC stands for universal health coverage and what it basically means is that uh, every Kenyan, when a, when a country gets into a point you can be able to say you're in a state of universal health coverage or UHC, it means that every resident in that country, and actually the term is resident because it is everybody residing in that country, not only the citizens, including the foreigners who reside here, should be able to access healthcare services without incurring financial hardships. And those uh, healthcare services should be of high quality. So it's about quality services and available healthcare services for everybody, such that you are not going to your pocket to pay for that health. Uh, health. Now, in terms of the journey, NHF currently, NHF as an institution, we are over. Uh, we NHF was started in 1966, so we are almost 60 years now, about 57 years old, and. Current membership starts at approximately 15.8 uh, million uh, registered members. When now you include the dependents, the spouses and the children, it comes to, uh, to about 36 million Kenyans. That's, those are the ones who are registered with NHF. But just to make it clear that as much as all those are registered, there's a, a big portion of them that are, there's a portion of them that are not currently actively contributing. So, because if you have to look at that coverage of that 6.6, .6, you'd actually talk of about 75% coverage. But you know the coverage is not there because there are a number of them who have enrolled with NHIF, but they are not actively contributing. And now that is where the idea of social health insurance comes. Why? Because now social health insurance means that no one is being left behind. Every person has been included in that social health insurance scheme. And what now the government is doing, and even what has been included in the amendment act, it's a way now that ensure that everybody who is employed continue contributing through their 
deductions in their salary. Those ones in the informal sector, mechanisms are put in place again, how they can also be able to pay. Like the people in the border, border, Juakali, who are not on a monthly income, but they are making income by themselves. They should be able to conveniently pay or remit to NHF. And then there's that category of membership, who are the, those ones we refer to as the poor and the vulnerable. In, sometimes we refer to them as indigents. Those ones, again, the new law now makes it an obligation for the government to cater for them. The census of 2019 identified about 5.1 million households and it is possible that number could have grown with the pandemic of uh, COVID-19 pandemic, uh, COVID pandemic. But whatever number it is, the law now makes it mandatory that every Kenyan will be a member of NHF, either through your employment, a deduction, informal sector you're making the contributions from the income you're generating, or the poor and the vulnerable, the indigents, the government contributing for them. So those are the, the people now we have in the basket now. Everybody, the 12.1 million households in Kenya now, by the time you are talking of attaining UEC, should be in that basket. And that is now what the government is going towards, even as now it removes the idea of having NHL being transformed to a social, national social health insurance scheme. Mm. Bona Karioki, yes. you are talking about legislation. The, yes. I believe it's the NHIF Act 2022. Yes. It's now mandatory yes. for every Kenyan to be part of the, the to be onboarded on NHIF. Exactly. exactly. So, I'm coming back to the fact that when you look at laws in Kenya, yes. it's more of a whipping mechanism. It's like mm -hmm. you're being channeled into a certain direction. Mm -hmm. But I'm looking at NHF as something that is need, needs that the common monarchy mm -hmm. moves with the will and understands the importance of the whole uh, setup. Sure. Now, how have you been able to use legislation mm -hmm. to increase even subscription? Because we are calling out to people to register. Yes. What has been the impact of it being backed by a legislative muscle? NHF is, uh, the, the good thing with NHF is that it is matters health. And uh, Kenyans appreciate that, and actually not only in Kenya, but uh, healthcare services have become very costly. The law provides the framework, the legal framework, which now makes it now uh, the law makes it a, a, an obligation for every Kenyan or it is mandatory for every Kenyan to be enrolled. And of course we know that those who are in employment are being deducted from their monthly income. Now the category that is tricky to deal with is the category we call the informal yeah, sector. Informal sector yeah. And that is why we are not talking of using a stick to make them pay because that one many times does not bear fruit. What you need to do is, first of all, make them appreciate the benefits they are going to get from it. And our benefits are very good. A Kenyan with an NHF cover will not face any financial hardships as they access their healthcare services. Right from the primary healthcare all the way to, to even secondary and tertiary care. And the other thing is that, so the, the, the approach here is making it convenient. Among actually the things that now current NHF is engaged in, is engaging with the informal sector groups. Because in the informal sector, actually, you find that's why we have uh, associations and circles that are working very well. For example, you have already signed an MOU with KTDA, just to give an example, Kenya Tea Development Agency. That's why that all the farmers who are contributing through KTDA, now they just need to give the consent to their board, and then their deductions are done at source. Such that the 6000 that is paid for an informal sector person per year, that member, that farmer, a tea farmer does not have to be bothered. They give consent that once you receive, you are, you are, you are paying my, my, my bonus, or only you are paying my mandri, uh, the amount they pay the mandri, just deduct the 500 or the 6,000 from my bonus and I'm catered for. And we are engaging also with other circles like the Matatu circles, the Boda Boda circles, and that way we will be able now to make it convenient for them because they make money. For, like, for, for information, any chef contribution is only 17 shillings per day. And that Boda Boda guy, for example, the one in Nairobi, they make between 1,000 to 1,200 shillings per day. So if they were just to get 20 bob out of that money and put it aside, it is now an insurance for the whole family for the insurance. And Boda Boda person in the village makes between 500 and 700 shillings. Again, they only need to take 20 bob. Even the Mama Boga, the profit they make maybe out of their uh, selling the vegetables in the market every evening or through the day. Maybe they make between 200 and 300 shillings per day. They only need to set aside 20 shillings per day. And that is sufficient to cater for the health insurance cover for the family. So the approach here is not using the sticks in terms of this is what the law says. But, they, uh, but of course you tell them this is what the law says. But for you to be able to comply, this is how you comply. Uh, tell your circle to pay for you. Even because you find even those Mama Boga, they are having the table banking. They just need to have an arrangement with the official that out of what we are contributing every month, put aside this one, 
or every day because I'm even contribute daily or weekly, put aside this one and it goes towards the health insurance cover for my family. So the idea is to making it convenient for them. Of course, first of all, make them appreciate the benefits and then make it convenient for them and that way everybody will have complied. If you use the stick, people will resist and you don't achieve the objective for which you wanted it. Indeed. And yes. now looking at the fact that you deal with the beneficiaries, yes. that is where your scan is around. Yes. I'm going to ask you this. Mm -hmm. uh, we have to look at the factors of value for money because yes. if Kenyans are to contribute these 17 shillings each and every day, yes. it's a lot of money mm -hmm. that needs to be accounted for in a proper way. Mm -hmm. Now I'm looking at the health facilities in the country. You told me about tertiary, primary, and yes. I'm also going to ask you to break that down because mm -hmm. to a common mind it may be hard to be able to differentiate what is the mm -hmm. difference between this or the other. Yes. How do you uh, ensure that there is a quality that is standard and optimum for the common monainchi. Thank you. Um, one thing I want to assure Kenyans is that NHIF we have uh, a very clear and I would say elaborate process of bringing of facilities on board. And actually that process does not start with NHIF. It starts with the Ministry of Health because remember the responsibilities of regulation of matters health is the Ministry of Health. So NHIF actually comes to the tail end when facilities have already been qualified by the Ministry of Health. Because the Ministry of Health has a department like what we call uh, the Kenya Health uh, Professionals Oversight, Author Oversight Authority, it's called KHPO in, sh in short. Mm -hmm. We also have the Kenya Medical Practitioners and Dentist Council. Those bodies are involved in the processes of licensing and co ensuring that the facilities that are offering healthcare services in Kenya, that is government, private and faith-based, mm -hmm. they, they meet a, a, a given level of quality that is defined. Now, once a facility has been licensed and registered by the Ken Kenya Medical Practitioners and Dentist Council, the Kenya Health Professionals Oversight Authority has been able to again confirm the healthcare professionals that are giving services in those facilities meet the criteria that have been set. And it shall now guess that list, gazetted list, and now again now again confirm that which services are these facilities able to offer. Once we confirm the services they are able to offer, then we empanel them. And when we put them in our panel, we actually sign a contract with them. The contract has very clear obligations even in terms of quality. And even to make it better is that NHF has a full-fledged quality assurance and standards department. Mm -hmm. And we have officers even at the grassroots level. And these officers are trained medics who now engage with those facilities continually. They actually engage with what we call the quality improvement teams in the healthcare providers to ensure that the level of quality that is being given to our members is that level that has been determined. And if you find a facility has a gap, we will take action at our, on our side, but we will even escalate it, for example, to the Kenya, uh, Kenya Medical Practitioners and Dentist Council, so that they can also be able to enforce where we feel this is now an issue that needs to be addressed at that level. What we need to address at our level, we can terminate a contract with that facility, or we can put any other sanctions. So in terms of assuring Kenyans, because currently we have 8,547, Mm -hmm. facilities in our panel. Of course, the majority of them are government 66% and that is the beauty of it. So the 8,000 is both public and private? Yes, it's good because we have government are approximately 5,600, private are approximately 2,600 and the rest are faith-based about 300 and something. So those now comprise the whole panel of hospitals that our members can access benefits from. And any of those facilities, and what I was saying is that the beauty is that most of them being government, and this is a government agenda. Then the government has a commitment to ensure that those services are meeting the quality services that Kenyans want. Mm -hmm. For private and again for Facebook, again we are working with them very closely and they have associations again, they have formed. We meet with those, with those organizations on quarterly basis to tell them and we point out to them, we tell them there is a gap here, there is a gap here, there is a gap here. And we even mention to them specific facilities. There is this facility in your association that we are having a challenge with. So then they take it up. And even if they don't take it up as an institution, as an initiative, we are going to take it up and ensure that facility is able to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. So Kenyans can be assured that as they go to receive care in a particular facility that is empanelled with NHIF, the quality is there. And we have actually suspended or even terminated contracts with those facilities that need, did meet the threshold that we have set. Mm -hmm. Yes. And you've told me that NHIF comes at the tail end of this whole process. Yes. In real sense, it's that NHIF is the impact that the, that the common Mwananchi will feel. Sure. We are taking on matters of the benefits of the beneficiaries. Yes. What benefits are these that are being offered to Kenyans? Good. That is one of the best questions I like answering. Because uh, Kenyans need to know, you know, for a long time, and as I mentioned, we used to be called National Hospital Insurance Fund. Mm -hmm. 
And why we were called being National Hospital Insurance Fund, and I believe maybe that is why at the point when NHF was formed in 1965, through the session, uh, session on paper number 10 of 1965, and then NHF was born in 1966 as a department in the Ministry of Health. It was a National Hospital Insurance Fund because by then it was catering for hospital expenses only. And actually for a long time Kenya would say NHF would be that was the, That was the talk. Mm -hmm. However, in, in, 19, uh, in the year 2050, of course, we became a parastatal in the year uh, 1998. And still we continue to agree to just covering inpatient care. That is why Kenyans would say we do not Kitada. Because we could only be catered for if you went for an admission. But in 2015, we enhanced our benefit package. That is the year when the, contrib the monthly contributions were enhanced and also the benefits were expanded from just that one benefit mm -hmm. of inpatient care amakulipa kitada as kenyans would call it mm -hmm. now we are paying 10 benefits and i'm going to uh, just mention them very quickly mm -hmm. benefit number one is outpatient care mm -hmm. outpatient care had not been offered between all those years from the time nhf uh, uh, was formed in 1966 mm -hmm. but from 2015 kenya started enjoying outpatient care what is required for the kenyans is that you need to Identify the hospital here, you need to be going for your outpatient care, and then you select, you tell NHF, this is the hospital where I want to be going for my outpatient care. Number two is inpatient care. And before we go to inpatient, yes. how about we break down what we mean by outpatient care? Now, outpatient care would say it covers what we call the basic or primary health care services. Any treatment that does not require you to be admitted. You have a cold, you have some stomach infections, you have some uh, upper respiratory tract infection, any treatment that you go, the doctor is able to see you, prescribe some medication or some tests are done and does not require you to be admitted for care. So it is, uh, you go, you are treated, you go back home because you can still be able to receive and administer medications to yourself at home. And NHF that is covers the cost. NHF covers the cost. Mm -hmm. What is required for you is that you need to have selected a hospital where you need to be accessing those services because NHF actually pays that facility to ensure that it is able to give the services that you have agreed with the facility to offer you. Primary health care. Mm -hmm. Then we go to the inpatient care. Inpatient care now is now any treatment that requires you to be admitted in a hospital because maybe it requires more closer attention by the doctor. Mm -hmm. So you are going to be admitted for a day to whatever period mm -hmm. as the doctor determines depending on the ailment that you are suffering from. Again, in the you will be able to cater for your bills. And maybe before, as even as I go to that, as I was mentioning about the healthcare providers, the 8,547. Uh -huh. Those facilities, again, we have contracted into them into two categories of contracts. It is very important I, I clarify that as I mentioned the benefits. Now, one contract, we call it comprehensive contract. What that means is that any member of NHIF or any beneficiary of NHIF going to that hospital will be able to receive care and they will not have to pay from their pocket, more often than not, unless somebody has insulted their enemies. We actually say it is a walk-in, walk-out. You go, you are, it's a mother going to deliver, whether it is CS or normal delivery, you go deliver, go back home. You have gone for, you have been admitted with typhoid, with malaria, with whatever ailment you are suffering from. You'll be admitted, and if you'll be able to get for your whole All the tests, all the lab tests, all the examination that needs to be done, the consultation fee by the doctor, the nursing care, the bed, and everything you'll be catered for in a comprehensive care facility. Mm -hmm. We have what we call non-comprehensive contracts. Now, non-comprehensive contracts, are the fears because they are only about le slightly less than 700 facilities in the country out of the 8,000. Now those facilities now we sign an comprehensive contract. What it means is that if you go to such a hospital at the admitted and they shall only pay for you a portion of a bill and then there's another bill that you need to cater for with your other insurance cover. Because the assumption is that by the time you are going to those high, because they are mostly high cost, uh -huh. by the time you are going to that high cost, more often than, than not is expected that you have another insurance cover over and above NHF so that NHF will pay its portion and the other insurance will come and pay their, their portion. Mm -hmm. So that is now how in the inpatient works. If you go to a comprehensive contract facility, the entire bill is covered by NHF. If you go to an uncomprehensive NHF covers a portion, then the other insurance or USF will cover the rest. Benefit number three is maternity. I think I've already explained. We cover both normal delivery and cesarean section delivery. Mm -hmm. Benefit number four is radiology. We cover advanced radiological procedures. The radiological procedures that are likely to go to need are like X-ray, ultrasound, mm -hmm. CT scan, and MRI. Now, X-ray and ultrasound are covered at a, a, both inpatient and outpatient. Mm -hmm. Those are basic radiological procedures. So if you need an X-ray or an ultrasound, it is going to be catered for either through within your inpatient or your outpatient, depending on whether you are being treated as an outpatient. But now when it comes to the advanced ones, which are expensive, the MRI and CT scans, we actually 
offer them a standalone benefit because they are actually not even available in many hospitals. So if, for example, you go into a facility like Bagavi, just to give an example, and then the doctor prescribes an MRI and they don't have an MRI there, you are going to go to a hospital where they have an MRI mm -hmm. with that prescription, the hospital is going to make a request to NHF and NHF is going to pay for you for that MRI mm -hmm. without you going to your pocket. The same case with CT scan. Benefit number five, I believe we have the surgical package. Mm -hmm. The surgical package is another very popular package. And why it's popular is that for a long time, Kenyans have been suffering for uh, intervention when they need surgical interventions for their healing. But because we know surgical procedures are very expensive in this country, Kenyans would die with their, pro with their sickness at home. But when we introduce the surgical procedures, it means a Kenyan requiring some minor surgeries, major surgeries, and even specialized surgeries. Specialized surgery, you are talking of things like total hip replacement, total knee replacement, craniotomies when you are operating things to do with the head and that. Now they are covered under NHF. Mm -hmm. And provided you, are an, you have an NHF cover, and you are going to the hospitals who are calling comprehensive, which are the majority in the country, the faith based the government facilities like Kenyatta and others, MTRH, KU Hospital, you will be able to be covered for that craniotomy, total hip replacement, without paying a cent from your pocket mm -hmm. under the specialized benefit, under the specialized surgery. If it is a major surgery like uh, abdominal, uh, what we call total abdominal hysterectomies and others, again you'll be catered for still fully by NHIF if you go to a comprehensive care facility. So a very popular package because now many Kenyans have been able to access surgical procedure that they could previously not afford. And by the way, even if you needed that procedure out of the country, for example, maybe it's a procedure that cannot be done locally. Mm -hmm. You are also covered for that procedure out of the country and you'll be able to pay for you. If that is the procedure we pay for 100,000 Kenya shillings in Kenya, mm -hmm. we'll actually be able to pay for you the same amount in a hospital in India, Turkey or wherever. Mm -hmm. Benefit number six is oncology care. Another benefit that Kenyans have utilized. Mm -hmm. Cancer care. Cancer treatment is very expensive. Very, very expensive very indeed. Expensive. Actually, when a family... A member of a family is diagnosed with cancer. That family know we are done. We are, we we are, are going to sell our yeah. cows, we sell our property, we sell our land, we do for dressing, and finally the person dies. And the family is completely bankrupt. And almost every you can be able to give fitness. Now Kenyans can be able to access four benefits, actually five within the oncology care. You are able to access basic chemotherapy, you are able to access complex chemotherapy, and by the Basic chemotherapy you pay for you up to 25,000 shillings per session. Complex chemotherapy you pay for you are up to 100,000 uh, 100, Kenya shillings per session. Mm -hmm. Then we have what we call radiotherapy. Again, radiotherapy we cover you uh, uh, approximately 3,600 uh, shillings per, per session. And there are several sessions. Then you are covered also for brachytherapy, mostly uh, used for treatment, I think, for cervical cancer. Mm -hmm. Again, you are covered for brach brachytherapy. And you are also covered for PET scan. PET scan is, an, again, an neurological procedure that is specific for cancer mm -hmm. to determine to what extent cancer has spread in your body. Again, it's covered within the oncology package. So what we are saying, a Kenyan who unfortunately has been diagnosed with cancer, they don't have to do for dressings. They don't have to sell their property. They are covered fully by an HIV. Even that Kenyan who is contributing only 6,000 shillings per year. They are mm -hmm. covered for those procedures. And I'm mentioning you can be covered up to 100,000 shillings per session. Another benefit is renal dialysis. Kenyans who are suffering renal failure. Unfortunately, Kenya, Kenya is a country where we are having so many cases of uh, non-communicable diseases, the chronic illnesses, hypertension, diabetes, that are leading to renal failure. Now with renal failure, it means that your kidneys can no longer function and you need an to be assisted artificially to go, uh, to go through dialysis as the procedure. So dialysis is covered at for two sessions per week and each session we cover you for 9,500 Kenya shillings. If you multiply that per year, we are actually covering that Kenya for about 988,000 9, 9, 9, mm -hmm. Kenya. That's about a million. A Kenyan who has given you 6,000 is able to enjoy a benefit of a million within one year. And remember this person could be accessing dialysis is being admitted for other procedures so within a year maybe this person has access benefits worth about two million kenya shillings so when you are talking of value for money as you mentioned somewhere mm -hmm. kenyans are literally getting value. actually sometimes when we make such presentations even to when countries come to benchmark with us they ask us what magic are you doing mm -hmm. with six thousand kenya shillings you can be able to offer all those benefits and we tell them yes it is efficiency in terms of management of the resources that we have and that is where we have gone even beyond and negotiated with facilities we are, we are calling comprehensive contracts so that we are sure that Kenyans are not being required to co-pay when they go for to receive care in the healthcare providers. Another benefit that we offer is what we call 
mental and behavioral health package. Mm -hmm. This is Kenyans who, need, who have mental issues and they need to go for a, to a mental a hospital or a psychiatric care. They are covered for NHI, by NHIF and even those Kenyans who unfortunately are, could be abusing drugs and they need rehabilitation. Mm -hmm. They are also covered for drug and, uh, and substance abuse rehabilitation. We have rehabilitation centers we have empanelled in the country where Kenyans can go and they are paid for up to 60,000 Kenya shillings for them to go through the rehabilitation process. Mm -hmm. uh, another benefit number nine is the road uh, ambulance services. Kenyans need to know that if in a situation of emergency you are an NHF member, mm -hmm. you are at home and an accident has happened or even on the road or even you're in a hospital and you need to be transferred because adequate care is not available, the doctor has prescribed, you need to be transferred. You don't have to pay from your pocket. There's an ambulance service you can call. We have, uh, we have uh, contracted a, an ambulance healthcare provider which has a network across the country under the Red Cross and you can simply call, an ambulance comes and picks you, pick, takes you where care is, require, is, is available and you're not paying a dime from your pocket. And lastly, we have the overseas care as I had mentioned earlier. If treatment is not available locally, you can actually access it out of the country and the chef will be able to pay for you the same to the same extent it could have paid for you locally, to be able to pay for you when you go for treatment abroad. So Kenyans, you are covered by NHIF. If you have not enrolled, you need to enroll because there is actually a lot of financial burden uh, NHIF is going to take away from you as far as your healthcare is concerned. Mm -hmm. And as we talk of UEC, and that's why we're very happy even to see successful governments pushing that agenda. It is very important that Kenya gets to a state of UAC where every Kenyan can go to us to access these benefits without facing any financial hardships.